If you criticize any of it, you're arrested. The left is making its move. It's not the left, folks. They have just tailored it and packaged it as the left. And the Republicans have gone along with it. The other parties have gone along with it in Europe. The good news is McConnell's gone. Excuse me, Freudian slip. Boehner's gone. And now it has begun. Top RNC official calls for a move to remove Mitch McConnell from the Senate leadership position. We'll be covering this more on the weekday show, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. tomorrow. Going back to Joe Bannister. Joe, the establishment, as you know, likes to act like it's invincible. Well, this one is completely illegitimate. America is in its death throes right now with open borders. You mentioned the giant migrant invasions, uh, the, the D Democratic Party, the Pope, everybody telling us we've got to pay for this or we're bad. Uh, just, just, just bizarre behavior when Saudi Arabia hasn't taken, quote, one migrant, but then Europe's supposed to. I think, again, this shows their desperate move for Cloward and Piven. But finally, comment on that, because you mentioned it before the break. And then talk about solutions. What do you think? You're a really smart guy. What should we replace the IRS with? Because we didn't have it, as you know, until 1913. The average American wasn't taxed by it until the 50s. I mean, how do we get our prosperity back? What are solutions from the mind of Joe Bannister at agentfortruth.com? <laughs> Thanks, Alex. Well, um you know, as far as the uh, immigration issue or the Pope and uh, what, what we're being told, one thing that, that I that gripes me is that the countries that say, if, if we're talking about U.S. and um, the uh, Mexican and South American and Central American migrants that come up this way, um, we get berated for not just laying out the red carpet, but I don't hear even internationally uh, how much beration berating is going on for the countries that they come from, because what kind of cesspool, well, you know, how bad, how stinky must the cesspool be to cause any person, any human being to, to uproot, leave everything, take a dangerous you know, route on trains and with coyotes and, you know, the human kind, the so-called humans, uh, the dangers that they encounter to come here, what kind of ugly, stinking cesspool are they coming from? And where is the clamor for a cleanup, you know, of those cesspools rather than, than just uh, berating us for, you know, not welcoming uh, the, these new neighbors? Why make the poor people go through that in the first place? How about cleaning up where they live now? Uh, you know, I I have through in-laws and other family, uh, they've immigrated from Europe, from Italy. Um, it's a tough thing, and I'm they're they're glad they came, but why put people through that? Maybe they don't want to be put through that. Maybe they'd actually like to, uh, you know, be helped to clean up their own country so that they can remain speaking their language and, and, and living their culture out rather than going through the dangers of coming here. And, the, you know, the cool thing about being Catholic uh, is that you, things like immigration or the death penalty or, you know, there's certain things that are non-negotiable. You can't be a Catholic and be for abortion, uh, you know, but you can be a Catholic and be, uh, have, make prudential judgments about something like immigration or climate change. You can disagree with the Pope or your, your bishop about uh, the, that you think climate change is, is a bunch of bunk uh, or that immigration, there's a lot of dangerous uh, people that come with the, the migrants and that that can present a danger to the people, you know, living where, where it is these migrants want to come to. Sure, I can't go to Mexico and have my babies for free. Exactly. So, you know, I think that, uh, I mean, it, uh you know, as far as the, the it's not like, oh, I'm a Catholic, so I can't speak up about these things. You really have quite a bit of freedom uh, to speak up and, and, and let, let Well, since your, you mentioned that, I mean, because the last popes and people like, say, Pope, you know, John Paul II was anti-communist, free market, anti-abortion. I just, that's why I was never, you know, these people that love to bash Catholics, I never joined that. I saw the media always attacking Catholics. What does it say when the whole leftist media suddenly loves this pope? I mean, it's, it's pretty wild. Uh, yeah, and it, and it gives me great concern because yeah, if you're loved by the world, uh, <laughs> you got you got to or somebody that you uh, you know that's that's running your your church is is loved by the world. You have to you have to watch out. Now uh, I think that there's certain messages that uh, Pope Francis puts out there, uh, talking about the beatitudes and and all kinds of things, um, defending the unborn. Um, 
you know, that I happen to agree with. But again, it's not like uh, Catholics have to be lockstep about these other matters. They call them prudential matters. You use prudence, prudential judgment to determine, well, what is really the safest and the, the most just way to deal with these issues? Um, so anyway, that's why that's I, a key uh, point. Maybe the media is taking statements he makes and only taking those out of context to misrepresent overall what's being said, because I can get really nasty and I want to be fair about it. Uh, so I'll have to investigate that. Shifting gears, what would you do about the IRS? What's a better system? In, I mean, a sales tax? I'd be for it if they actually got rid of the income tax, but I don't want to have a new one and then keep both. Right, and I, I'm I'm afraid of that too. Uh, what you know? How many times have they done a bait and switch on us? You know, fool me once, you know. So uh, I would be um, very concerned that uh, something like a national sales tax would be the bait and switch would be oh we're going to get rid of that income tax right after we implement the national sales tax and then we have both because they're not going to get rid of uh, you know the income tax which is a great way to control and intimidate people. The other thing that concerns me about the national sales tax as it's been um, formulated in um, uh, AB twenty five or. Um, not AB, but, you know, uh, Bill 25, I believe, where it's actually been articulated and put into a bill. The thing that concerns me, if you look and see the uh, the bureaucracy that's involved there with the national sales tax, they claim that, oh, the IRS will go away and the rank and file American isn't going to have to worry about forms anymore. That's not what the bill says. The bill actually puts the onus, if you uh, buy a good and, and you don't pay a tax on it, you're required to, to file a return yourself to report it. So, uh, so it creates you know, a whole so new tax police running around going after swap mates. Exactly. So I'd read the fine print. I mean, I'm all for uh, simplifying the tax system and certainly you know, getting rid of the IRS, quote unquote. Uh, but the thing I'm concerned with is, you know, Americans don't read the fine print. and we Yeah, let's not replace it with something even worse. Right. I mean, look how the income tax turned out. It started out with a 1% tax rate. Uh, of course, the truth the truth be known, uh, they had to backtrack after the Supreme Court case, the Bruce Schaber case, and that's what this whole rub is about the income tax. There are tax laws that reach out and touch an American that might go work abroad or a non-resident alien who comes here to work, that kind of thing. But the average American living here and working here is not embraced by the federal tax laws as they're written and that's just a fact um, they can only write it back then with jurisdiction for somebody via kind of like a tariff right they're offshore exactly exactly and that's why i encourage people to read more about it because you know not this isn't a sales pitch to take on the irs one-on-one -on -one, but the fact is it's a deep and and stinking fraud and i think you ought to know about it well i mean it's in the communist manifesto you know, they put that in there 20 years before, and then we suddenly make it law here. This is not a good idea. You know, I call you a hero, but you turned down a great job. You were rising through the ranks. You told the truth. You, you had them come after you twice, indict you. You defeated it with a jury uh, in a world of cowards because folks talk big till the hammer comes down. I got to tell you, Joe, I met you. 17 years ago, and I'm proud to know you. Anytime you come through Austin, we'd love to have you in studio. Uh, you and your family, great troopers, uh, you know, your, your sons and everybody fighting tyranny. We're really proud of your work, and it's people like you that, that have made this country great. And I think out of all this tyranny, we're going to end up even being greater in the end coming through this. So I want to salute you and thank you. 30-second final comment. Oh, God bless you, Alex, and everybody there. I love coming there in person and, and saying hi to everybody. Um, you know, I would say, like, let's take, uh, let's let's honor one of Pope Francis's requests. He asked people to pray for him. Uh, so let's all pray for him and pray for each other that we can discern corruption when it's uh, you know skulking around, and that we have the um, the courage to expose it, and that if enough of us do that and pray for each other for strength, uh, we can actually do away with this. But we have to remember that you know God knows what's going on, Jesus knows what's going on in the world and in His church, and uh, we need to keep that uh, dialogue going with God and uh, and establish or reestablish or strengthen the relationship with God and pray for one another. And I think that uh, amazing things can happen. Great points. That. God bless you. We'll talk to you again soon. Great job, crew.